We didn't even have the cake we paid for. Pets just all over the place because just thinking about this is getting me upset. So many question marks and we were so stressed out. Like I was ready to cancel the wedding. I basically did my makeup myself. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been a while since I've done a sit down type of video. As you can see, we have a special guest, Jay, and that's because we will be spilling all the tea on our wedding. I also put kind of like a question poll on my Instagram. You guys actually sent in a ton of questions, so we definitely will be answering those as well. We have our wine, and we actually just finished having dinner, featuring none other than Caraway Home. Before we get into the questions and spilling the tea, I just wanna dive quickly into that. So right before we left to Italy, Caraway Home was kind enough to send us over some brand new pots and pans, which is just so crazy because that was literally the number one thing on our registry, I was like, I need these pots and pans in the beautiful gray color. And literally the same week, they sent them to us. So I was just over the moon, so excited. Now we're back home and we are missing Italy a lot. So I decided to try and make one of my favorite dishes I had in Italy. Basically spaghetti with clams. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you would see that I made it. And I also post the recipe on my TikTok, so check that out. I was so excited to use my brand new pots and pans. As you guys may or may not know, Caraway has a... 100% toxic free kind of like a protective ceramic on all of their pots and pans so it's completely like nothing will stick to the pan super easy cleanup as you guys may or may not know I'm not really you know the one to be in the kitchen most of the time but because these are so easy to clean I find myself wanting to experiment more and even cook more caraway pots and pans come in the most beautiful colors I had the hardest time that was actually the hardest part of me picking which one I wanted because I loved every color and they also come with these really cool organizers that magnetize together so you know if you want to display them in your kitchen have them look so aesthetic and beautiful you definitely can and they also come along with these little I think they're like pot covers so like you know when you're having people over you want to like just put the pot down on the table but you don't want to burn it they come with these like covers that you put on the table and put it on top so I'll have a discount code linked down below for you guys this discount code is only valid for the next two weeks so definitely get your hands on it if you've been wanting it and having your eye on it like I did for months leading up to getting it definitely check it out down below and now let's continue on with the rest of the video so I figured I'm gonna start off with the questions first and then we would just like fill in with the story. So the first question we're gonna start off light is what was your favorite part of the day? So do you wanna go first? My favorite part of the day, uh, two favorites part of the day, sorry. First, the speeches. I thought the speeches were amazing, especially your brothers, honestly. Like, yeah. I thought your, your brothers were like very, you know, emotional and, you know, made me feel like it was like my own brother because I don't have any brothers made that it feel like my own brothers were saying it to me and like they knew me and like our relationship like the like forever and then plus honestly rolling around Positano and the um the mini Fiat oh, yeah, and then getting the photos from that was like awesome it was a lot of fun like just being able to swerve in and out and getting all the way up there to get the cool photos I thought those were my two favorite yeah I would say the same two favorite the speeches were very emotional and even the ceremony itself my godmother officiated the wedding and it was just so special having her do that and it was just absolutely perfect I can't wait till we get back the video so I can show you guys and then also again like you said the fiat that was just the coolest thing ever if I'm being completely honest we were so stressed out leading up to the fiat and I feel like once we finally like did the first look went to the fiat and like took all those photos we actually Actually, like I don't know personally I just feel like I could relax and like okay wow this is really happening although we have you know already been married since last year with our elopement this really felt like you know this is a, a wedding we're gonna have a lot of guests we're gonna like all this stuff I feel like it was just so cool and then also I would say our entrance to the wedding that oh, that was was a lot of fun, we man. literally planned this entrance like five minutes before walking out I was just like you know what Jen? I think I wanted to do this entrance and he was like let's do it and so I thought that was really cool none of our families expected that and then I also feel like the party itself we had so much fun like rapping singing dancing vibing with everyone and just like having all of our family and friends just be together it was just such a beautiful time okay so the next question i have is why two weddings do you want to explain it yeah i mean we we definitely didn't initially plan to have two weddings but we knew one we wanted to make it extremely memorable but two we also wanted to make sure that our grandparents were like very important and some of the most important people in our lives were able to be a part of it let's backtrack a little bit so when we initially 
decided we were gonna get married of course we wanted to do it here in new york city because we love it here all of our families here it would have just made sense so we saw one place which is the low boathouse in central park which we actually saw today in the news that they're actually closing which is just crazy because they're closing yeah. the same month that our wedding would have been which is this year in october so that worked out somehow but anyway we went to see that we loved it and like just hearing the numbers and how much we would have to spend to have it there like don't get me wrong it's a beautiful place it would have been like the coolest like new york city vibe wedding but we just really started thinking like what is really us like what is true to us and we really love to travel and just go a bunch of places and so i started doing research like okay let's see how much it really is to have you know an international destination wedding because we weren't going to do a wedding in like you know a nearby island it was definitely going to be somewhere in europe that was like always the immediate yeah. thing and he was way more into it than i was at first i was just like a little nervous about like pricing and stuff like that but it ended up being significantly cheaper having our wedding in italy don't get me wrong we still spent a lot of money <laughs> we just didn't spend like a hundred thousand dollars so that was like the initial reason why we decided to do that and then like Jay said, our grandparents are super important to us, so that's why we decided to do an elopement. We literally decided to do the elopement like, what would you say, like a month before we did it? It was like yeah, in August probably, we decided it, yeah. Done. And so a big reason for that is one, our grandparents, fortunately, are not getting any younger. And we did have a scare with my grandpa just like a month or two before this. And I feel like that really just made me so nervous. Like I just can't even imagine not having them be part of our day. So that's why we decided to do the moment that quickly. And in the end, it's crazy. Like if I were to ever think like what my quote unquote dream wedding would be, it would be either somewhere in Europe or New York City. And we kind of got to do both. Yeah, we really did. And to be honest with you, even though it was an elopement, it felt like so real. Yeah. Like, it felt like, like it felt like it was like a huge ceremony. It felt like, it, it just felt like it was like something that we planned for a year. Like it was an amazing one feeling, but it was just an amazing time. I'm so happy we did it that way. Like we honestly didn't even think the elopement was going to feel like a real wedding until like I feel like the day of and I was like oh my god I'm getting married I was like getting nervous to like go there and he was so nervous you were there about like four hours earlier or I mean, something that, not four hours early like two hours early yeah like the, just standing the, in the bar by to the point to the point where I'm there in a tuxedo and some I'm sitting there for like at least 45 minutes at this point some guy comes up to me and goes don't worry she'll show I was like <laughs> thanks by the way in true New York City fashion I took the subway to my wedding ridiculous <laughs> but anyway we're talking a lot let's get to the next question how do you feel being married now i mean i like obviously like now i know i'm married but we lived with each other and we're like very serious and like very combined and everything for the two years we lived together before even getting married and like i felt i've already felt so like welcomed by your family and like like uh and i felt like they were my own family that it didn't feel too much like a shell shock yeah. at least to me or anything like that um no yeah so for I, sure yeah like I, like when we first told our told my parents that we were moving um in together my dad like sat us down and had a conversation mainly with jay less with me and he was just like i want you to understand what this means you're not moving in and being a roommate so if you're moving in with my daughter i'm like this like the expectation is that you will be you know married like this is your forever person like you can't, you can't just move in with someone that you're just like casually dating. It needs to be something like serious. I also like didn't move in intending to like break up at some point. No, like, I know, but it's like some people like will move in together and live with each other for years and not like 10 years and then not get married for like the longest time and yeah. you're just waiting around. Like yeah. my dad is like, my daughter's living with you. Uh, you should start prepping the ring from now kind of thing. <laughs> in terms of how I feel now being married, like, I, like he said, I feel like we've been married this whole time. If I think I feel a little sad that the wedding stuff is over. Like I, when, when we came home, I was like a little depressed, you would say. Yeah, you just felt like no sense of direction, like post, like after work. Okay, what do I do now? I know, I was like, wait, <laughs> so I don't have to sit on the computer and stress myself out about like wedding stuff? Like, what am I supposed to do with my time right now? Like it was just an adjustment, but now I'm happy. Now we could focus on 
continuing to travel, more goals we have in life, and just, you know, accomplish them all together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question is, everything was so beautiful, was it your dream wedding? Which we already answered yes. Well, you didn't answer it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, well, I guess as a guy, like, you, I don't... I never like grew up thinking well, this is gonna be my dream. Well, like, me neither. Whatever. Me neither. I know, but but I, I feel like, like right now, if someone were to say, "What is your dream wedding?" or like when we started planning, I was thinking like the two places we said were New York City or Europe. Like, yeah, and so like, but it also came out perfectly. Like I, I'm happy that it was small, intimate, and I was able to spend time with each individual person like there, or had like at least you know something meaningful to say with like each individual per person and it wasn't something where I felt overwhelmed because I'm the type of person that I have to like if I'm at a party I have to continue to move oh, yeah. to make sure I'm to saying like... hi, to make sure I'm saying hi to every single person so if it was a 200 250 person wedding like I would probably not have eaten and probably would not have enjoyed it and I would have been exhausted because I would have gone around and spoken to every single person there just to say thank you hello and like make sure no that you say more thing. than that you're like having like a whole 30 minute conversation <laughs> I'm like we gotta gotta keep going but yeah that was also a big reason actually a really huge reason why we chose a wedding over there was one I have a massive family like let's just put things into perspective for the engagement party we had what like 125 to 150 people there and that's closest family and friends so in hispanic families you have to invite everyone and that would have just been a lot there would have been like a 300 plus wedding yeah, and that would have given me so much anxiety i had so much anxiety even for engagement party don't get me wrong i had an amazing time but i was like so anxious that i was sick leading up to it not because of like anything in particular but just because i wanted everyone to have an amazing time I was like nervous to say the speeches, like I was nervous, like I was just super nervous with everything. Whereas in Italy, because it was like literally the most closest, intimate, like people we talk to every day, multiple times a day, I had zero ounce of anxiety, even saying the speeches or dances, zero nerves, which is very unlike me. And I feel like that just like solidified even more that that was 100% like the best decision to like have things that way okay the next question is how did you guys plan everything did you have a wedding planner yes we did have a wedding planner <laughs> should we just didn't go the best yeah. okay this is a long story so sit down get yourself a glass because trust me you're gonna need it we initially decided we were having our wedding internationally we definitely were like okay we need to invest in a wedding planner because most likely we won't even see the venue or where we're going until the day of the wedding so our wedding planner was written up in you know the magazines in italy the new i'm um, not a magazine newspapers in italy um, I found her on Instagram and her work looked amazing. She had, you know, fireworks at weddings, you know, massive, huge weddings at villas, small weddings, all this stuff. So I was like, okay, I really like, you know, the way she does things. Let me just reach out. So we spoke with her and we're totally vibing with her. She was actually from um, the US and moved to Italy about like 16 years ago, I think, and started this company. In our initial meeting, she was telling us everything we wanted to hear. You know, I'm an American that moved to Italy. I, you know, can, um, what's it called? Bridge the gap between we're, two yeah, cultures. Yeah, bridge the gap between two cultures. Um, make sure that there's easy communication. Like she literally gave us like a whole outline of everything that she's gonna do, which was more than we were even looking for so we we're like okay wow like the price is you know reasonable well you know reasonable for the amount that she was gonna do is still something we had to like you know really save for this whole wedding we also had to really save for but that was like an additional cost on top of that and you know she made all these promises we were super happy and then things just started going bad <laughs> The initial thing was we paid her like X amount to find our venue. That took a while um, not to find the venue, but for her to get us a contract, which should have been the red flag, like just right then and there, but we just gave her the benefit of the doubt. Um, she told us it would take two weeks for her to find us a venue and sign the contract and um, put any down deposits that are necessary, all within two weeks. So we were like, oh, this is perfect. This was like... We actually met with her the same day as our engagement party, so I think that was like July 10th, like through FaceTime, I'm not, through Zoom, of yeah, course. Yeah. And so she was like, no problem, I'm going to have this all be settled. We didn't get the contract for the wedding for like another month, and we didn't complain at all. We were like, oh, I totally understand, you know, it's very busy with everything going on, like a lot of weddings getting pushed back, not a problem. 
So we signed the contract and then after we signed the contract, we then had the option to continue with the full service wedding planning with her. So since she did an amazing job with that and you know she explained to us everything that was going to be involved in the wedding planning service, we were like, you know, why not? Like, I think this is the perfect match. And that's where we went wrong because we definitely should have shopped around and met with a few wedding planners before just putting all of our eggs in one basket and maybe we wouldn't have had the stress we had for the past like what 10 months planning yeah. it yeah no. september comes around and she told us she's super busy with wedding because it's like wedding season and she won't be able to talk to us until what was it like november right? i think it was like end of october like the last week of october we were stressed planning this moment that we decided to plan within a month um beforehand so i was like no problem totally understand that you're busy we'll you know talk then the end of october rolls around and we're like having to not like nag her to meet like with her but she was like oh i'm busy this day i'm only available this day so we met with her and she basically gave us um well she didn't really give us anything we were the ones kind of like okay like let's start the wedding planning process like we have no vendors right now like what should we be doing and so she told us the most important vendors as of right now was the flowers photographer videographer and makeup artist so after we met with her she told us the vendors that we needed to have um she recommended three photographers she's worked with before three videographers and three makeup artists now when i tell you that these photographers were putting like old school instagram filters like super yellow like sepia on these photos i was like absolutely not i was like look i'm willing to pay extra money to fly someone in and have someone amazing of course we couldn't fly someone in from here because italy's actually very strict with having non-italian photographers they really want you to like work with someone from their country so they have to be italian she was like uh i, I guess you would say annoyed about that right like she yeah. was like like uh, which i didn't get because you know if your client doesn't like it you show three more options and you can continue yeah. to go until you find somebody that you know works yeah, yeah. it works and i wasn't asking for anything crazy i just wanted regular photos like of course all these are edited but i just wanted like i wanted to look like us i didn't want to look like somebody else mm -hmm. and so i had to do a lot of searching myself and ended up finding the photographer and videographer both myself which fine no problem like by the way they killed it yeah they were the best then it came to the makeup artist and she straight up told me well the makeup artists here aren't really great um you're not gonna like it so i suggest you um maybe have one of your guests do it or do it yourself and i was like what like no it's my wedding like i want to just sit there and have someone else do it why would i do it myself so that was a whole other thing she started sending me um makeup artists and honestly they weren't really great they also only worked on caucasian people there was no people of color black hispanic asian indian literally nothing else and so that really worried me that's when i found this um makeup company that actually did all like the celebrities um what was that festival they recently did con film yeah festival. so they did um a lot of celebrities there they've done all types of different skin tones hair types everything so i found them myself as well fine i booked all these vendors um through her though of course which now that i think about it, i should have just booked it directly myself but whatever she wanted to i guess organize it then it came time to the payments so we need to send the down payments for everything at that point for those vendors jay is was the one in charge of sending the down payments so jay sent over the money for the photographer and videographer and we just didn't hear back from her for like two months literally two months nothing so we don't even know if we have a photographer videographer we don't even know if the money was sent to them if the wedding planner ran away with their, our money we knew nothing and we were getting like really stressed out it was like a few thousand dollars it's not something cheap and we weren't planning anything like we didn't even talk about like color scheme uh any ideas inspo she literally was just like book those vendors that's it so that was end of October. We didn't hear back from her until January. Yep. And during then, we reached out to her a few times through email, maybe like three times. I want to say. But to be and to be clear, we weren't like bugging. We were just like yeah, no. We were just like hey, just want to make sure that you know you received the money. Yeah. Hey, just I want to make hey, sure. I sent you a few thousand dollars. Can I just get confirmation <laughs> yeah. that we're good here? Never responded. 
And keep in mind, I had her on Instagram, so I'm seeing her post like every single day, but not responding to us, which like just made it even worse. So then January rolls around and I was like, look, I'm texting her, which we haven't really talked through text at this point, it was really just emails. And I texted her and I was like, hey, I just wanna make sure you're okay and not like, you know, God forbid in the hospital or something because we haven't heard from you in months and you know, I just wanna make sure you're at okay. At this point our wedding six months away. Yeah, and we haven't heard anything from her. So she basically um, didn't like that. And then she was like, oh, I've done so much for you guys, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what have you done? like?" We have other friends who were getting married around the same time and they were telling me their timeline of things and at this point they already had like pretty much everything planned and the last six months is just putting the little pieces together. January rolls around after she had her text and we finally, finally get to be able to speak to her. And I, we come as cordial as possible and she comes semi-prepared with stuff like yeah, she had like you know, flower looks, she had confirmation, she Like had a little PowerPoint. So like she knew that we were mad and like, oh wow, like I guess maybe she realized she screwed up by you know, not responding to us for two months. Which is, keep in mind, part of the contract was that unlimited text calls, videos, nonstop. And look, which I, never and I get if you're busy, I get if you go away on vacation, I get if your staff gets sick because of COVID. I get yeah. everything. Just say, hey, I'll get back, I'll get, I'll get to this in a few weeks. Everything is good. You're with it well within the timeline. That's it. Um, I don't really remember like the timeline for the rest of it because like, you know, we had a lot going on. I wasn't really focused on the wedding, I would say, for the month of like February. Then March came around and that's when I was like, okay, like we need to start we need to start like solidifying stuff. Like, yeah, we had that great meeting in January, but at this point, we don't even have the flowers yet. Like I don't even know. And we also had no idea how much we were paying. She gave us like a ballpark estimate and every day was going up and up, even if we weren't adding anything. It was just somehow the estimate was going up and up. Which is stressful because, you know, we paid for this whole wedding on our own. We're budgeting for this every day. So it was just very stressful for us. It seemed like we were just kind of being put on the back burner and all of her like big, more lavish weddings were at the forefront. So we're in March and this is when we started doing, what was it, the menu? like yep. choosing the menu. So she sent them sent them over to us and we chose what we wanted and then we didn't hear back from her for like another three, four weeks again. Mm -hmm. But fine, at this point, like it seems like everything sorted for the most part and we had to move, as you guys know, so we were dealing with that. A lot of craziness going on. But then it was, what, like a month before the wedding, maybe like a month and a half before the wedding, and she emails us back and is like, you can't have that menu like like as if i asked for the craziest thing in mind the menu i wanted i just wanted a fish option a veggie option and a meat option i'm pescatarian there's a few people in our family that are vegetarians and then everyone else eats meat so obviously we need to adhere to everyone's dietary restrictions she was like absolutely not there's no way that's happening like literally going off on me through email to the point where I was like, am I like, like maybe she doesn't understand me? So I started adding my mom into the emails like to see if maybe my mom could like see where like the miscommunication was because Jay even tried and he was like, I don't understand why she's like fighting us on this. We're paying a lot of money. This is like a four or five star restaurant in this four or five star hotel. Why can't we just have another option? We will pay extra all of this. So it was like the biggest thing when I tell you the week of our um, move in May, she called me and went off on me. Like called out me- Out of the blue. Out of the blue. Like we've never, everything has to be scheduled with her, which is fine, not a problem. She called me out of the blue and went off on me saying, you know, I put so much time and effort into this wedding and you're, you're uh, being difficult, blah, blah. Like all this craziness. And she also called us, um, what did she call us? Did she say cheap? Like, like our wedding was cheap or something? Remember she said that in an email? Like she kept saying like, oh well I'm doing, um, some of my other brides are paying um, 900 uh, euro per plate. So you guys Good are lucky. Them. Good and for we're them. like, okay, like what does that have to do with us? We're not complaining about how much we're paying. We've never complained about how much it was ever. So that just put like a bad taste in my mouth. And I honestly stopped talking to her after that. I completely left it in the hands of Jay. And my mom wasn't even nice to you guys after that. Yeah, no, no, it, it, it was it was a little difficult, but we were like in crunch time at that point. It was like 
five weeks away. I'd say like 10, 12 days before the wedding. Um, we still didn't know how much we were paying for this. No, 10, 12 days before we left, not before the wedding. So our wedding was on the 23rd. We left like the 16th or 17th, I can't remember. So 10, 12 days before that, we had a meeting with her that we literally had to like beg for this meeting. Um, Jay and my mom. Because at this point, we didn't know how much we were paying. She, yeah, we didn't have a final budget and we were leaving in like a week. Yeah. Ridiculous. And we didn't have like an outline of timeline of how things were going to be. She was supposed to reserve, um, make reservations for our rehearsal dinner, our welcome drinks, and the boat to Capri. None of that was made. No times. Like nothing was scheduled. It was just a complete disaster. Um, we sent over music for the DJ. Never heard back from her on that. Like everything was just a complete like up in the air so many question marks and we were so stressed out like i was ready to cancel the wedding that's how just beyond stressed out i was and if you guys may have seen my vlogs i was sick with you know what unfortunately which added a whole other layer of stress and just i was just crying like the whole time we met with her on zoom and even then i barely spoke but she was being so rude to my mom like my mom was just there to try and like facilitate this figure it out because there were just so many questions also that same week she told us we went from having an open bar included to yeah you can have an open bar but you have to pay an additional 2,000 euro that we just found out about this like 10 days before we were leaving then it turned to no open bar at all so we were like what is going on like I am so confused Finally, we were able to meet with her, and like I said, she was just not nice at all. She was so nasty to my mom, like straight up arguing with my mom. And my mom's like, look, I'm not here to argue with you. We just need to know how much do they have to pay. There needs to be an open bar, and like we just need to sort these details out. It was like a three-hour Zoom because that's how much was not sorted. After the Zoom, she you know, claims things were sorted, and we were just basically hoping for the best yeah. to the wedding. Should we dive deep into how that went? Yeah, it was a little chaotic. Yeah, so remember how I was saying we were super stressed out leading up to the fiat? Well, um, let's just say nothing was like how yes. Like it came out, not don't get me wrong, we had the most amazing, beautiful dream wedding, like truly a fairy tale, everything we could have dreamed of, but that's because we <laughs> stressed ourselves out last minute with all these details. Us my mom, my dad, my brother's trying to like, and my Didi's trying to figure it all out last minute because she just, we basically, I feel like paid her for nothing. Like we could have 100% done this ourselves. There were so many mistakes. It's not even funny. I mean, like one mistake I could think of off the top of my head, we didn't even have the cake we paid for. We paid a lot of money for the cake and champagne tower. The champagne tower was half the size it was supposed insert to be. Insert picture. Yeah, I'll insert a photo. Half the size it was supposed to be. And the only thing I told her was that I want a chocolate cake. I don't care how it looks. I just want a chocolate cake. With white frosting on the outside. She gave us like a three tier cake. And it wasn't even chocolate. Jan, like I didn't even realize until later on the night. I'm like, why? Did we pay so much money to not even get the cake we wanted? Yeah, I, yeah that that was ridiculous. I, I have no idea. Like, it, like, it, and it's such a stark difference, vanilla or chocolate. Yeah, and it wasn't like we were asking for like a uh, lemon something. Like, it was just so simple. Like, I just want chocolate. That's it. Let's start off with. I'm, I'm like my head just all over the place because just thinking about this is getting me upset. But yeah, back to the wedding itself. So things that were not um, done how they should have been. The welcome party. We show up to the bar, um, we're not allowed to have music at this welcome party. No music's allowed. So my family is like, what? No, we need to figure this out. So we spent the first hour basically going back and forth with management because all, oh, also she didn't show up to the welcome party. <laughs> she was supposed to be there. She didn't show up to it. She was supposed to bring the welcome bags. She didn't bring it. She left it at the hotel and told us to bring it. So we had to lug these ourselves, which whatever. Um, and also the reservations for like everything she made like the week of like super last minute which you can't do there at all like every reservation we made we made it way far in advance yeah. so that was just like come on then the wedding day itself 
this I feel like was more stressful for me than you. So the fact that I had no idea what was going on during the whole time. Yeah, so obviously we were separated for the day itself. We slept together the night before, obviously we were already married. But the day itself, starting at like 11 a.m. I would say, you were staying in another room and I was staying in the suite and all of like, you know, everyone in the wedding party came to our room to like get ready and everything. Oh, and I forgot one big detail. When we showed up to the hotel and checked in, the first thing they said to us was, oh, you guys are Sierra and Jay. And we're like, yeah. And they're like, and you guys are working with the wedding planner. Like they said her name. And we were like, yeah. And she goes, well, now that you're here, I think it's best if we just communicate with each other because we don't want any further miscommunication with her and we, we would just rather speak to you guys directly. And so to me, I was like, oh, okay, so this just solidified that it's not just us. Yeah, like, it made us feel less crazy. Yeah, I was like, she's giving an issue with these people too and they were so sweet and made, they also made everything that much better. Like, thank God for them. Now, back to getting ready for the wedding itself. The first thing the makeup and hair artist said when they saw me was the exact same thing. They told me that they reached out to the wedding planner for months for photos of all of us, which I had already provided to her back in January, even I think maybe before that, without even being asked, I just said, you know, I think they should know what we look like and our hair so they can prepare. She never responded to them. They said they reached out to her several times to also ask for any inspo that we had so they can come prepared because our makeup hair artists were coming from Capri and taking a ferry over so they can only bring so much with them and you know obviously it'd be helpful if they saw what we looked like to know what they had to bring and like the inspo she never responds to them for any of this then they said they were literally trying so hard they were trying to find me anywhere on social media and as you guys know my social media is only under my first and middle name so they were never gonna find me so basically they were not as prepared as they would have liked to been and that definitely caused some issues. In the end, everything turned out fine, but it was definitely very stressful. Everything turned out great with like our moms and the bridesmaids, like they all looked amazing. But because my skin tone and like my undertone is so like, I don't explain it. Like it's even hard for me to find like an exact foundation ma match just because of like the weird like undertone I have. Not weird, but not like, normal i guess so that caused some issues basically they did my entire hair and makeup and also they asked her to have adequate lighting there was no lighting in that room yeah, so we had to room. use literally the windows which you know that's not always the I best do. yeah so it was very stressful on their part i felt so bad for them they were the sweetest ever also keep in mind some of them barely spoke english but they were still able to communicate to us that, oh, your wedding planner was the worst. She never responded to us, like, come on. So then it literally was 30 minutes until I had to be down um, to take the, the Fiat photos and do the first look. And they showed me my makeup. Now, the makeup looked great, but the issue is that the undertone was not correct, so my face looked very, very gray. And I just, I spent so much money on like, you know, my dress, this wedding, the photographer, videographer. I knew like looking into the future, I would be so upset if I did not yeah. just redo this. Like I was like, I need to redo this. I know it may push things back, but I, I want to feel like beautiful and like confident, confident in the, like, you know, the way that I look. And I just knew I was not going to. So I had 20 minutes. 20 minutes to take everything off and redo the entire thing i basically did my makeup myself for this wedding they did like the eyes the hair and everything the lashes and stuff but the face i literally just took a mirror like a little handheld one i didn't say a single word of course i was so i, I wasn't rude to them or anything it was not their fault they were the sweetest kindest ever they're even in a few of my tiktoks they were the best i would highly recommend them and to work with a wedding planner that answers them. Um, but I literally just sat there like this and I was just like, no one talked yeah. to me, like I gotta figure this out. We didn't even realize this until recently, but no one sat during the wedding because she didn't tell anyone to sit. Which is not that big of a deal, but it's like, come on, like yeah, you're like supposed to be coordinating this and she didn't coordinate anything. Even at the end of the wedding, we told her that we wanted to have one last dance, just us two and have everyone line up outside and have like, you know, a nice sparkler exit. That never happened. Literally the last like five minutes of the wedding, she came up to me and she was like, 
um, your photographer and videographer are leaving, um, you have to decide either you do the last dance or the sparkler exit. You can't do both. And you need to figure it out right now. And if you want to do the sparkler exit, you need to arrange for everyone to go out there right now yourself. And I was just like, what? Like, like what is going on? So I'm running around in my dress, in my heels, trying to get everyone outside. Everyone at this point, it's definitely very lit. So you can just imagine me trying to get everyone to go outside to the sparkler exit. A chase, Jay had to chase down the photographer and videographer to make sure they stayed. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, didn't we pay for her to coordinate the wedding? And she Thanks. truly just gave us the sparklers and was like, okay, bye. And like, we had to do everything else ourselves. Like, she did not stay for the whole time of the wedding at all. So that was also very annoying and stressful. There's definitely a bunch of other things that I'm just like, oh, also she never told us our DJ wasn't an MC. Yeah, which was, then we had to throw it on her godfather last second. Hey, I need you to say a few words real quick as we walk out. Yeah, like we texted her and we were like, hey, we're ready to the entrance. And she goes, okay, just walk in. I'm like, like, isn't someone gonna like introduce us? And she's like, oh, you don't have an MC, it's just a DJ. Like, when were you gonna tell us that? Like here in, in like, at least New York, they're always a DJ and an MC. Like we don't need someone to get people on the dance floor because trust me, my family does not have a problem with that. But we just wanted someone to say like, introducing Mr. and yes. Mrs. Like that's all we needed. She, like, if I were the wedding planner and they didn't have an MC, I would have been the one doing it. Seriously. You know, like she didn't offer nothing. So I was just like, whatever. Um, there's definitely a bunch of other things like for food She kept telling them to take our food away when we weren't even done like it just didn't make any sense But aside from all of that the wedding was amazing. We all had an amazing time It's just the reason why it bothers us is because like we paid someone To make sure these things wouldn't happen then also the next day was the boat day She told us to be there at 945 We show up at 945 at the port which we've never been to before so we don't even know where we're really supposed to go she shows up like 10 something way after us so we're jay was running all around like the beaches by posi tunnel trying to find her like thinking we missed the boat we were all stressed out it was like blazing hot we had everyone go down there because she didn't arrange any transfers for us texting her no response finally she shows up just walking down oh hey yeah the, the boat should be here soon I'm like, you could have texted saying, I'm running a few minutes late. Anything. Yeah, you guys are in the right spot. Something. No sense of communication at all. And that's basically how this whole wedding process was. Zero communication. Tons of miscommunication. She never cared to like... She just didn't care, honestly. Also with the boat. Small things. Like, for instance, she told us there was going to be snacks. Oh, same thing with the welcome party. She said there was going to be like appetizers. There was none for both. So then that kind of you know put the boat people in like a weird position they're like okay no problem they literally had a boat come out and bring a snack in the middle of the ocean that's how nice these boat people were so she was just like wipe my hands clean i can care less and that's basically how it happened in terms of the open bar yes we did have to pay additional money for that i don't know how that ended up happening but she was basically like either you pay or you don't have one anymore which was never in the contract in the beginning yeah whatever but yeah, that's a lot of the craziness that happened. Like I said, I'm sure there's tons that we forgot, but yeah, I'm like stressed out just thinking about that again. Okay, next question. Maybe personal, but did you feel a wedding abroad was more affordable than one in New York City? Yeah, 1000%. We Bottom, what we were getting quoted in New York was $60,000. 65. 65. At the low boathouse, it would have been 65000 just for food. Um, the venue, the uh, venue, so. chairs and stuff, and then if you added in like the most expensive thing is really photography, videography, and I would say DJ kind of and flowers. Flowers is like who knew how expensive flowers were? I had no idea. So when you we did all the math, we would have easily spent a hundred thousand. Yeah, easily, on that. easily. So and not even been able to have everyone there, which would have caused issues. So I was just like, forget it. So definitely less expensive. Yeah. Will you be selling your wedding dress? It's amazing and a dream. Thank you, but no. <laughs> no. I've literally gotten this question so many times since I posted any videos, photos, anything. And same thing with our elopement one people asked me. Preserving or putting away. Yeah, I'm a very sentimental person. I just feel like my dresses were made for me. I know that sounds crazy because obviously they weren't and there's tons of other people. Yeah, I just feel like it's mine. I want to keep it. 
I don't think my future daughter is gonna wear it or anything like that, but I just personally, I don't know, I just think it's cool. But yeah, sorry, I'm not selling. Okay, next question, tips for planning a destination wedding. Definitely get a, a good wedding planner. Shop around a yeah. bit, yeah. Shop around for a good wedding planner. If it's somewhere where you can visit, I would definitely recommend visiting. We're so lucky that our venue turned out to be way more beautiful than we even thought. Like we saw it through FaceTime videos, photos, and when we showed up there, I was like getting emotional. Yeah, it was, and, lot, like, it was even nicer. Like the pictures didn't even do justice. Yeah, I was still like emotional and kind of like in tears almost. I was like, oh my god, this is we were getting married. Like this is so much nicer than I yeah, it thought like, it was gonna be. Like it's everything I've ever wanted. So definitely, um, if you can't see it, I would do that. Get a wedding planner and just like set expectations like we were on the same page from day one about small intimate wedding we don't need to invite the whole world <laughs> someone asked did you have a budget and did you go over i don't think we really had a budget we didn't say this is the yeah we did have a budget okay you're right we didn't say like our budget's like fifty thousand dollars or something we never said that but we did say we would like to not go over x amount just because like we were we had our idea of what we wanted the wedding to be but i wasn't sitting here like oh we need to have this or that like for instance the fireworks i was like oh that'd be cool to have she told us they were what like seven thousand dollars i was like cross that right off we don't need it you know like nothing was really like I'm, I'm not, i wasn't one of those brides that was like i must have this i must have this like yeah but we were cognizant like we weren't like okay oh okay yeah we'll spend you know Oh, okay, yeah, $15,000 just to make the chairs look nicer? Like, no, we weren't doing that. No, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we had ideas, like, inspo, and if we sent it to her and she was like, oh, that'll be, like, I don't know, some crazy amount, we're like, okay, yeah, let's we not do that. Like, a, like a cost-benefit analysis. Like, do we care about that? Yes. Right. Okay, then we'll splurge on that. Do we really care about that? Will that move a needle or make, like, an experience better for us? Then no, we don't need this spend a crazy amount on like that and then in terms of us going over so like i said since we didn't have a set budget um i guess i'll refer to our our ideal amount we would have liked to pay we didn't go over at all no 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 yeah that's everything those are all the questions we have this video has been long enough but if you guys have any other questions feel free to leave them down below and definitely dm me um but i just want to thank you guys so much for being so supportive throughout this whole wedding planning process you guys have been with us from the beginning from the proposal and now here we are two weddings later maybe we're gonna have a third mm -hmm. stay tuned for that <laughs> but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'm so grateful for all of you and definitely make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any upcoming content because we haven't gone on our honeymoon yet so we have not Italy for 17 days was not our honeymoon. Yeah, it was not. That was our wedding trip. So honeymoon definitely coming up. Leave your guesses down below where you think. And I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>